Jenny, these are uh, pretty turbulent times at the moment. Um, we've got a number of points to cover, including some questions from, from the fans, so we'll get cracking. Um, in this current climate, how easy is it for you at the moment to concentrate on football matters, you know, playing games and you know, potentially a promotion push at the end of it? Yeah, there there is a big picture, isn't there? And obviously the nation, the world, really, and and making sure everybody's safe, and um, and and then looking after you know the people that that, that um, obviously you're close to, and 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 work colleagues as well, looking after each other. So there there is a big picture, but you know, aside from that, we're, we've all got our eyes on how and when the the, the football world can get back. Uh, to some type of normality, some competition, finishing off this season, how we then get into next season. You know, we're looking at all of those things. I don't think right now there are any clear answers, but the the, the important thing is that we all commu communicate clearly so that when um, that there is a, a, a lifting of the sanctions, if you like, you know, we're ready to go. And how often are you speaking to the owners and, and the board at the moment? What are they saying about the situation? I suppose it's it's clear as mud, really. Yeah, my, my main contact is is through Mark Catlin and uh, Tony Brown. We have, though, all, all of us spoken to uh, um, you know, Michael Eisner, Andy Redmond, you know, uh, Eric Eisner uh, as well. And, and Mark, you know, speaks to them more, more regularly than anybody. So, uh, you know, dialogue is, is vital in these scenarios just to keep updated and, and make sure that uh, as and when things do get back to normal, we're prepared and um, uh, as, as well as looking after everybody and making sure everybody is safe uh, as a business, um, we're you know good to go and can come out of this strongly. You'll be used to having 25, 30 players, members of staff, you're seeing every single day down at the training ground. How hard is it keeping up the spirits of a team when they're all individually separated in isolation at the moment? Yeah, there's a lot made in the media about about the the training, but you know my thing through all of this has been, you know, the players' mental well-being, you know, your family situation, um, uh, where you are, how you you're working towards, um, you know, being strong mentally for for, for other people as well, and, and then after that you can you can then put your your mind towards keeping fit, making sure that. You know, you get a program that can keep you ticking over, and it does coincide with the, um, the let's say, uh, 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 daily exercise that you are allowed. It looks like the middle of May is going to be this rough sort of time that people are allowed to come back to train, and the players are going to be able to return to train. Do you think that's realistic at the moment? Yeah, if you if you're seeing middle of May to maybe train, um, you're seeing in other countries where they're they're working in small groups. Uh, Germany, there's groups of four or five uh, that stay together right the way through. They will be, I'm sure, you know, tested before and, and maybe on a regular basis, then working with the same coach or coaches as well. So, you know, that, that type of thing, common sense tells you that's the best way of starting training whenever that is. And, and looking at a month, a month from now, um, if, if the lockdown in the next three weeks all does go well, then you can see that being a possibility. Um, to then get to the next stage of actually playing games, i.e., I, you know, perhaps around about the start of June, that's quite looks quite a big hurdle. Um, the, 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 the thing talked about mostly is behind closed doors. That does look like the, the, the sensible option. And um, you know, if we do get to that, you know, that would be fantastic. What would be the best case scenario, in your opinion, for getting this current season done? Would that, that be the behind closed door option? Yeah, it seems to be the thing that everybody is talking about, and and you know how how and uh, when we develop an exit strategy as a as a country, that's that's the first thing, and then football will be working off that, obviously with you know with with the crowds, um, whether that is uh, over the next few months or whether that is for the for the rest of the year. I suppose it does really then go on to um, uh, where and when you know a vaccine is. Is brought in but um, you know for us anyway we have to just you know make, make sure we, we we keep our communication high for, uh, in, inside of the club we're, we're ready we will be ready uh, when called upon to, to play and um, you know there, there will be then a whole set of problems there is no doubt about that but you know football then gets back to any type of normality there'll, there'll be welcome problems. Steve so we've got nine league games left now how would you approach those nine games, Kenny, is it almost like a continuation from the season that ended in, in March or is it a straight nine game shootout mini season almost? Yeah, it'll feel like a new season with the amount of, of time we've been off. The, 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 the difference though is for the, for the players, 
um, they wouldn't have been, let's say, on you know, able to go away on holiday. They'll be, you know, uh, uh, ticking over and and working harder and um, uh, making sure that they're ready because we haven't, you know, got the let's say nine stroke ten month usual season ahead of us. We have, as you say, there a nine game season. So uh, getting some friendly games in, uh, one or two people that were injured will be will be back, which is good news for us. Uh, a fully fit squad, uh, making sure that we get the right amount of friendlies in the two or three weeks that we may have in pre-season as well. So that anyway, from the first game, uh, we we hit the ground running. It'd be slightly different football from the football that we left. We, we were right in the middle of a you know real winter period where there was a you know a bad weather, a lot of rain. It will be in, in, in essentially summer football when we do come back, and that changes it slightly as well mentioned earlier around being behind closed doors and sort of best case scenario at the moment how hard is that going to be in terms of motivation levels for for players and staff as well where you know they're playing at Fratton Park but they're not playing in front of 18,000 fans yeah I think it will be different but I don't think your motivation level should be any should, should be any less I wouldn't expect that from myself firstly my staff all my players and and our motivation would be to to get into the championship and you know being currently fourth in the league we have a we have a great chance of that in, in, a, in a short space of time. So the motivation will be there. It will be different, of course. You know, we know that. Uh, we understand and, and I've always been of the opinion that, that uh, the crowd, the, the Portsmouth crowd, both home and away, is a major asset for us. Um, and if that's not there, uh, the quality of our, of our play, our winning mentality has to come out on top. That's, um, that, that's a big thing. It will be a situation where we do have to adapt and we have to adapt better than the opposition. Have you known anything like it yourself before, Kenny, either as a manager or as a player? No, obviously not. It's unprecedented times, isn't it? You know, you've never seen anything interrupt a football season like this. And, uh, you know, it's a global problem. But, um, you know, if we all work together, uh, support each other and, and make sure then, again, after that, on a business level, our communication right the way through is very, very clear, then we, we can, you know, come out the other side stronger. And that's the... Um, uh, and that's the aim where everybody and you know I, I speak to other managers, I speak to other coaches all of the time and and, and similarly to you know uh, uh, mark uh, uh, Tony, they will speak to you know their opposite numbers as well and and so all of the clubs first and foremost working together is is a, an important thing but but we also have to remember that each club is an individual business and maybe slightly different in terms of their approach but uh, for us uh, we have to you know stay strong, make sure that um, uh, Portsmouth Football Club comes out of this uh, strongly and um, you know, the, the other side comes, uh, we're one of the successful ones. Certainly a worst case scenario, but if the season is cooled off, do you feel current positions should stand or become null and void, which we've seen a, a lot further down in the football pyramid? Yeah, it's tough to be. I think it's tough to be null and void myself. You know, you're looking at Liverpool and, and then do you just make an exception of Liverpool and, and then start going around? Do you break it off? Uh, at the Premier League and and then go into the AFL. They're all discussions for, for for the powers that be, not necessarily myself. But I think to just make things null and void is 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 very difficult. Average points um, is 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 one answer. I don't think there's a there's a there's a way you will satisfy everybody. And you know, obviously, with that level, we would perhaps just miss out. But um, you know, whatever the case is, I don't think that you can keep everybody happy. And um, uh, different people have have different ideas uh, but whichever way the, the powers that be decide that that's the case I think again you have to be you have to adapt you have to be uh, uh, determined that when you do come through you can you can uh, pause a breath reset a little bit and go again whether it be this season or next season. And yourself Kenny obviously you're like the rest of us um, how are you coping at the moment at home um, how are you keeping yourself busy besides obviously all the, all the work you're doing? Yeah watching a lot of games on or I've watched a lot of games in the last few weeks on on video and um, you know the services there now are, are you know very very good. The likes of Y Scout and Instat you know provide very very good services. Services so to to watch many games, uh, watch our own games, watch opposition games in in our division, and then most importantly watch fu future and potential scouting targets and and have you know regular m meetings like this with my with my scouting staff to 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 uh, be as thorough as we can about. Um, you know, potential targets in the future, whether that be this year, next year, in the future, you, you can't know enough about the market that you're working in. And uh, that's mainly 
uh, where my time has been supporting the players as well. As I said earlier, um, we've got you know a good, a good sports science and and fitness department where you know ev everybody you know is, is using the Strada Link and and as you know the correct uh, uh, watch that can uh, download and then give back the. Uh, uh, the, uh, the relevant work rate to, to to the fitness people. You know, we I sort of do check that the, the work rate of the players has been, you know, very very good. Each person is maybe slightly individual, and sometimes one week to the next we do vary. You need to do that. If you, you know, take say somebody like Jack Watmore individually, um, most of his of his miles, and you, you do need to put in miles. Um, uh, just you know, doing a, a quick workout every day in front of the TV won't be enough. But let, let's take Jack for instance. You know, he's done he's doing more bike work than running which is uh, the right thing to do for him and um, you know his work rate has been very very good so you know everybody's individual but uh, um, my, my job is as I said at the start making sure that you know people are, uh, feel uh, supported by the club that's that's the important thing if, if uh, mentally they're in a good place the physical fitness will, will, will follow. You said that the players are training from home. One of those players is Ronan Curtis, who's back training in Ireland. Was that a risk at all, considering the sort of social distancing measures which are in place at the moment? Yeah, I think it's better for him if you're looking at Ronan, his his mum, his dad, his brother, all, all live down in Portsmouth. You know, he did discuss it with me and we, we waited a while because obviously we didn't know how long it was going to last. Then when it looked like it was going to be a number of weeks, um, you know, he has three acres or his dad, mum and dad have three acres back in Ireland. So they, they went up to, to Hollyhead and, and as a family then uh, took the decision to go home. One, one which I, I, I supported as well. I think it's, it's the right thing. It's very, very easy for him to, to, to get back. And, um, you know, for them as a family, which again is, you know, something that we discussed and I'm, I'm, I'm pleased they talked to me about, um, you know, that was 100% the right decision. The timing of this, pandemic on and the effects on the season raises a lot of questions particularly with players running uh, players contracts who run out at the end of the season have those conversations um, started to take place yet yes definitely and you know there, there isn't unfortunately a set of answers right now but uh, as you know uh, contracts run out on the the, the the 30th of June you know for, for certain players uh, loan players are in a, a similar situation on or around then some before but um, but but mainly it's the 30th of June is is, is a, a contract end date uh, we all have to be aware of, of, of that but again when we all do get back every club will be in the same situation some maybe more than others but you know I, I, I think it's, it's one of those problems that if we get to that you know we have to work our way around it. I don't think there will be an easy solution. Uh, individually, if people are happy to continue playing, uh, if a player is happy to continue playing for, let's say, a month or two after that, then then that's fine. If they're not, then it's best then if they don't play and somebody else plays. I think that's going to be it. I don't think there's going to be a, 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 a an easy way to do that. And um, for the players to you know be committed is, 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 is always the case. You want players that want to be there and want to be committed. And it won't be any different in those situations. But um, to go right across the board will be difficult. I think it will be an individual basis myself. Yeah, like you say, it's not exactly like a one-size-fits-all uh, solution given how unique these circumstances are. But I suppose it all comes down to really knowing the dates for next year. Can you even start thinking about next season at all? I, I think we think about it and, and you know, how it affects the tran transfer window. Um, giving the clubs as much flexibility as possible is something that, you know, I, I believe in and I think will we'll need to be adhered to, you know, the relaxing of the rules or, or an extension of the transfer window would really help that um, where, you know, there can be a trade of players, if you like, to, 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 to actually help the clubs in terms of their planning. I, th I think that will, that will come in. I think common sense will, will prevail there. And uh, as I say, you know, if we do at some stage get this season played, whether it be behind closed doors or not, and then, then we can get into next year, whether it's uh, uh, um, slightly cut down, you know, there'll, there'll be good problems because it'll, it'll, it'll mean that uh, everybody, the country, the world is, is heading in the right direction. It does throw up some problems, definitely. And, and we understand that. And, and that, you know, there is, if, if you're a, a football club owner now and, or, or, or stakeholder, they're, they're very, very uncertain times for those guys. And it's difficult. So, you know, we all have to work together to make sure that, uh, you know, we can, we, can, we can come through it together. And have you earmarked any positions at the moment you feel you need to strengthen at all for next season? If, 
if so do you have any idea of, of where yeah we definitely were looking you know before all of the pandemic started definitely where, where we needed to strengthen and uh, also running it alongside contractual situations loans people that con those contracts were were, were running out and that will be no different there hasn't been any any progress you know this is very very difficult for any club to you know put, put, put a, um, a step forward at the moment and actually be, be um, uh, signing people but uh, yes you know we have identified and, and, and worked towards the different scenarios the players that we would like to keep the players that we would like to add how and when that happens that's 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 a different story but again you know our job inside is to be ready Finally, Kenny, for someone who's been around the game for, for a long time, can you ever see football returning to normality as we know it, whatever that looks like? Yeah, I think it will. I do think it will. I think it will build again, definitely. The, the, you know, the, the confidence in it, perhaps the finances may change, um, but they, they will only alter slightly. I think there's, there's, a, there's a popularity in football that will always win through. There's some adaptation, certainly, even in the next 12 months, definitely, I think. But... Um, um, it, it, it will come through. It will be it will be stronger again. Uh, there'll be you know foul sides in place. I have no doubt about that. Uh, but uh, it might be for the better of uh, or the greater good of the game.